Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, by popular demand, we're going to look at my favorite studio albums from the Scorpions. So you might be saying, well, wait, isn't this supposed to be ranking all the studio albums, Pete? Well, I don't own all the studio albums by the Scorpions. I basically kind of uh, love it for a sting. I kind of stopped with the Scorpions right about there. I actually had uh, an LP, you know, a couple of the ones after that. Like I had Savage Amusement, I had Crazy World, I had Face, Face the Heat. Um, I was never a big fan of those. I never replaced them on uh, on CD, all right? And uh, so I kind of have always left it at that. Although I do have one of the more recent, recent, recent ones. So basically what I'm going to do here, uh, because I've been putting this off and people have been asking for it and asking for it, so I said, you know what, I'm going to rank the ones that I have, and I'm going to leave it at that. So this is basically going to be a top 10, all right, my favorite 10, and uh, I'm pretty pretty happy with the ranking, I think. Uh, I really love old Scorpion stuff. I, you know, honestly, for me, once they released Love at First Sting, which was a huge album, and I do like that album, uh, I found that everything after that pretty damn mediocre. I did uh, I did like Alien Nation quite a bit on Face the Heat, but I found the rest of that album pretty lacking. Uh, Crazy World and Savage Amusement, not really into that. And all the stuff that I heard uh, throughout the 90s, not a fan at all. So I'm going to start off at, uh, I guess I guess there's 10 of these, right? So I'm going to start off at the bottom of my list, um, Sting in the Tail, which was supposed to be, I think this was 2010, this was supposed to be their big finale, their big, you know, the final release Going Away Party, all right, our big retirement album. Well, as we know, that turned out not to be the case. They're still out there touring 10 years later, releasing albums. Uh, you know, I found this when this came out. This was okay. Uh, at the time, if you go onto the website and read my review, I said, you know, if the Scorpions are going to go out with a bang, uh, this is a good kind of little shotgun blast, right? It's not the big triumphant return to glorious sounds of the late 70s or the early 80s, but as a, you know, melodic hard rock or metal album in 2010, not too shabby for the Scorpions, right? For me, probably the best thing I had heard in a while. Um, so that's going to be the bottom of the pile that I have. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with Love It For Sting. Again, was huge into this at the time. Saw them on this tour, as I'm sure many people did. All right. It's, you know, you got Bad Boys Running Wild, Rocky Like a Hurricane. Classic stuff right there. Coming home. Big city nights. You know. Um, still loving you. I don't know. The rest of it's okay. Uh, I think, you know, looking back, this album for me does not, has not aged as well as most of the others. I know there's probably going to be people that still love this album, and that's totally cool if you do. Um, it just hasn't really held on over the years as well with me. But that's okay. Next up, I'm going to go with uh, Animal Magnetism. All right, so now we're going back a little ways. This, of course, came out in 1980. All right. This is the uh, second Scorpions album I ever picked up. Some good stuff on here. This is the first uh, full album with uh, Matthias Jabs on lead guitar, of course. You know, Make It Real, Not Fantasy, great song. Uh, what else? Hold Me Tight, Lady Starlight, Fallen In Love, great song, The Zoo, title track, don't make no promises your body can't keep. Lots of good stuff on here. Fast and Furious, melodic, memorable. Dig the album. All right. First one I ever got. Black App. Great album. I remember seeing these guys live, opening up for Rainbow at Madison Square Garden on this tour. I love the album cover. I still do. And I remember, you know, first time I bought this album, I just played this thing all the time title track you know can't live without you of course no one like you which was played on fm rock radio back in the day you give me all i need now dynamite arizona china white when the smoke is going down pretty classic top to bottom I don't listen to it as much anymore i find that i don't listen to when i listen to the scorpions when i'm in the mood for the scorpions i pick the uli john roth era nine times out of ten i don't listen to the post roth stuff all that much anymore but you know i did play this i don't know maybe four months ago or something like that and i was like yeah you know what still a good album i played at the gym i was like it's good good gym music um i dig it i loved it back then uh, maybe don't love it anymore but i still enjoy it and i still appreciate the greatness of it next up i'm gonna go with love drive okay which of course uh love drive 1979 got uh 
course, Michael Shanker playing some lead guitar stuff on here. You got uh, Matthias Jabs. You got uh, Rudolf Shanker. You know, classic guys on here. Of course, dogs barking. Uh, Loving you Sunday morning. Another piece of meat. Always somewhere. Love that song. Great kind of ballad. Coast to coast. Can't get enough. I can't get enough. Awesome. Is there anybody there? Very cool song. We've got Love Drive title track. Killer. Holiday, another great song. Of course, the song that uh, Michael consistently bitching about nowadays, that he wrote the song, gave it to the Scorpions, and they gave him no credit for it. It's like, oh, whatever, Michael. Holy moly. All right, so now, for me, the absolute cream of the crop, the stuff that I gravitate towards the most when it comes to the Scorpions. So I'm going to go all the way back to 1970 with their debut album, Lonesome Crow. Speaking of Michael, he's, of course, on lead guitar in here, 15, 16 years old, something like that. This is a very kind of like a bluesy rock proto-metal type of an album. Lots of psych on here. Uh, very indicative of the uh, kind of the German, underground German rock scene at the time. Uh, I'm going mad. It all depends. Lead me in search of the peace of mind. Great tune, Inheritance, Action, and of course the 13 plus minute Lonesome Crow. A lot of great guitar solos on here, really kind of psychedelic stuff happening, uh, considering you know how young Michael was, pretty crazy. Um, yeah, good album. I mean, when I bought the original LP, well not the original LP, but I bought a reissue of the LP back in like the very early 80s, and it had a very different cover on it. It had like a giant... Uh, giant scorpion obviously and uh i believe drawn by rodney matthews if i'm not mistaken all right next up uh and i got uh, a couple on this kind of like little box set thing so this box set includes in trance virgin killer and fly to the rainbow i'm gonna go next up uh is going to be fly to the rainbow actually so that uh that's the album right there okay um i think fly to the rainbow for me is my least favorite of the roth albums but it, it still rules uh, you know, you got Fly People Fly, This Is My Song, Far Away, the title track, you know, some great stuff on Fly to the Rainbow. Um, the title track alone is amazing. So that's going to be next. Uh, coming in then, I'm going to go with Taken by Force. And uh, this is the last studio album with Uli John Roth, and or, or Ulrich Roth, as he was known as back then. Uh, it's got the classic Steam Rock Fever, We'll Burn the Sky, I mean, these are just these are legendary songs. You got I Got to Be Free, The Ride of Your Time, The Absolutely Essential Sales of Sharon, which, you know, for most people, if you've been following the Scorpions as long as, you know, I have and even longer, uh, Sales of Sharon is probably one of your favorite Scorpion songs, especially from that era. Great stuff. Uh, you know, You're a Light, He's a Woman, She's a Man, another classic old Scorpions tune. Born to Touch Your Feelings, all right. Got a bonus track from this uh, period, Suspender Love, right? It's great stuff. Very metallic album. Dig it. It's a shame that that was to be it with Uli, right? He would go on to play on his own, right? The old great Electric Sun stuff, which is very underrated, I think. All right, so now comes the tough part because the, my two favorites are like neck and neck. And I honestly, even right now, this second, I'm like, I'm not even sure which one I would pick over the other one. And I think, honestly, it doesn't really matter because these both of these albums mean so much to me. I love them to death. Uh, we're talking about In Trance and Virgin Killer. Um, you know what? Today, I'm going to go with number two. I'm going to go with In Trance. That's it right there. And, I mean, let's face it. You got some amazing, you know, you got the Dark Lady, you know, Uli sung a bunch of songs on those early albums, and while he does not have a great voice, he's got a very unmistakable tone and inflection, and I think it fits a lot of those songs because they're kind of like Hendrixy in nature, dark, metallic, bluesy, you know, just really different stuff. Um, we got the title track in Trance, you know, Life's Like a River, Top of the Bill, great song. Living and Dying, great Klaus Meine vocals on that. Um, what else? Robot Man classic robot man evening wind sun in my hand great great hendrixy guitar work on sun in my hand i mean i just love the guitar work of of roth on these early albums just great uh longing for fire another killer song and uh, night lights just great great stuff um oh man just sitting here looking at just all the great material on here. Then, you know, Virgin Killer, obviously, is going to be my favorite. And depending on where you were in the world, you might have had uh, different album covers. I don't even know if I should show the uh, the original album cover. We'll show it very briefly there because it's... Uh, I mean, it's just... <sighs> 
my original. The album that I got here in the U.S. did not look like that. It basically had the guys on the front. Uh, but a fantastic, fantastic album. You know, you got Pictured Life on it. You got Catch Your Train. All right. You got In Your Park. I Want to Walk in Your Park. Oh, great, great song. Backstage Queen. Title track Virgin Killer is amazing. Uh, what else? Hellcat. Again, blistering guitar work from Uli on that. Just and I, I love the, um, I love this especially. I love the tunes where he sang lead and Klaus did the vocals. I always thought they worked out really, really well. Uh, Crying Days, Polar Nights, and of course Yellow Raven, another fantastic song. You know other classic songs from this period. You got Speedy's Coming, Drifting Sun, They Need a Million. I mean all sorts of great stuff here uh, throughout these albums. And uh, man. Just classic, classic stuff. So there you have it. So my favorite album, like I said, and again, it's it's Thai, basically, or very, very close. Virgin Killer, number two, we're going to go with Entrance. Number three, Taken by Force. Number four, Fly to the Rainbow. Number five, Load Some Crow. Number six, Love Drive. Number seven, Blackout. Number eight, Animal Magnetism. Number nine, Love at First Sting. Number ten, we're going to go with Sting in the Tail. Uh, you know, as far as all the rest, they would kind of filter in somewhere after that but um you know whatever i don't concern myself too much with them because i'm uh, not much of a fan however i do want to mention this absolute beast of a live album here one of my favorite live albums of all time tokyo tapes this was the last thing that the band would do with uh uli roth ulrich roth whatever you want to call him from the time period uh a fantastic live album recorded in japan obviously and then he would leave the band kind of similar to what michael shanker did with ufo right release a killer live album then bloop go off on your own uh here just some you know and what many consider uh the definitive versions of a lot of these great songs you know picture life backstage queen polar nights you got all night long which doesn't appear on a studio album you got you know robot man speedy's coming stark lady i mean such great stuff on there and then you know if you're a fan of the uh the 80s lineup you got uh, the great worldwide live you know it may not be the best sounding live album in the world but pretty frantic and exuberant performances on here playing you know all the classic stuff from the 80s you know blackout bad boys running wild holiday coast to coast you know big city nights still loving you dynamite the zoo so on and so forth so two excellent live albums to kind of complement those great early studio albums so there you have the scorpions uh my favorite 10 studio albums out of the what 18 or 19 that they have so uh curious to see what are your favorite scorpions albums right because uh, i know you all have some different ones perhaps than mine or you rank them in a different order that's i totally would expect that remember we all hear these differently so there's no right or wrong answer here so curious to see what you guys uh, come up with and this is on the web at www.ctranquilly.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we are on youtube all the damn time what do we got coming up more german metal this weekend jack toledano is going to join me on sunday for top 10 songs of accept a lot of you have been asking for accept, so we're going to bring it to you. Uh, what else? The debut of The Monster's Den. I haven't figured out exactly which movie I'm doing. I have, I have it limited. I have it down to two. I'll just have to decide which one I'm going to do. I'll probably make that decision tomorrow. So that's coming this weekend. We're going to start once a week, probably on the weekends, uh, doing quick little reviews of classic monster and horror films from the... 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s you know all the classic stuff right so whether you love universal whether you love hammer uh maybe you like um the vincent price films maybe you're a fan of uh, 80 70s and 80s slasher films maybe you love the cheesy uh giant insect and monster you know films of the 50s and 60s maybe you love the kaiju movies you know godzilla Gamera, maybe you love King Kong, all that kind of stuff. I'm into all that. So uh, what we're going to be doing is once a week, I'm going to be reviewing one film from my library, talking about it, you know, and uh, we'll see how that goes, right? It's called The Monster's Den, so stay tuned for that. This is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're on YouTube all the damn time. I think I said that already. So again, thanks again, guys. We'll see you over the weekend. Bye-bye.